Hey, I want to welcome you to today's devotion. I want to ask you a question. Is there a, a, a habit, a bad habit, that you have that you really want to have victory over and you've struggled with? Well, today we're going to talk about that, so let's go straight to today's devotion. We all develop habits in our lives. Some of them are good habits, some of them are bad habits. So a good habit would be, well, if you eat every day and you eat healthy, that's a good habit. But if you eat obsessively, that's a bad habit. And so habits aren't something that's necessarily bad or necessarily good. It's really what kind of habits you have that are important. And, and what I found is that often we build bad habits into our lives and these bad habits become what the Bible calls strongholds. Let, let me explain to you what a stronghold is. Uh, when we're born, we're born with an old nature, a nature that is bent towards sin. And so it's, it's very easy for all of us to begin to develop choices and make choices that, that, that go the wrong way. And when you do that enough and you do it consistently, it becomes a habit and the habit can turn into a stronghold in your life that you just can't overcome. Some people call them addictions. Some people call them just bad habits. But I want you to know, Jesus doesn't want you to be controlled by anything but His Spirit. In fact, one of, one of the wonderful passages of Scripture is the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. If you read what the works of the flesh are, it lists them there, and then it lists the fruit of the Spirit. When your life is under the control of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be doing those bad habits, but you have to make choices. Now, let, let me share with you something that has been such a blessing to my life for, I mean, a lot of years. Uh, I met my wife, a, a beautiful young lady in college, and uh, her name was Debbie, is Debbie, but she was running for freshman class secretary, so she advertises a girl from Texas. And uh, so people began to call her Tex, and that's when I met her. So I called her Tex, and that's how she got her name. But, but she, she was a sweet young lady, vivacious, outgoing, very friendly, and she won by her, by the way, she won her race. And, and I started visiting with her, started dating her, started seeing her. And at that point in time, she was a church member, but she didn't know Jesus. And she had a habit, <laughs> and that habit was smoking. And I mean, she was a chain smoker. Uh, I mean, she smoked really, really heavily. And one night, she and I were talking, and, and, and she said, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I don't have peace in my heart, and, and I can't overcome this smoking. And I said, Jesus will set you free. And that night, she went up to her dorm room, and she took out her cigarettes, and she put them on the, her desk, and she said, Jesus, set me free. Jesus Christ came into her life and Jesus set her free. And that day she was indeed free. But she, she really struggled for a few days there because her habit was after every meal she would smoke. In the morning when she'd get up, she would smoke. So she struggled with smoking right at first because she had developed this habit and it was a stronghold. And, and, and she began to do this. She just began to read the Word and pray every day. And as she did, God set her free. Now, she was set free already by Jesus, but she had to learn to walk in that freedom. Now, here's the difference. Before you come to Christ, you're a slave to the sin. When you come to Christ, you're not a slave. But it doesn't mean that you don't have those strongholds built up. So how were those strongholds built up? They were built up brick by brick by brick by brick by brick. Day by day by day by day, you develop that habit. So what has to happen is, when Christ comes into your life, you're no longer a captive, a slave in that stronghold, but now what you can do is day by day, moment by moment, tear down that brick step by step. And so what she had to do was, when she was tempted, to say, Lord Jesus, I'm trusting you, I need you and God would give her victory in that minute. And as she made those choices day by day, what she found was before long, she had no desire to smoke and it was gone. And it's been gone the rest of her life and thank God for that because it would have had great health uh, concerns for her later on. And, and yet she got freedom over that, but it, it was a daily choice, she had to choose. And what was the habit that she chose? She chose prayer, dependence upon God, and faith on an everyday basis. So when she would begin to, to be struggling with that, she would make a choice. She would pray. Whenever temptation would come to pull out a cigarette or go get a cigarette or go buy a pack of cigarettes, she would go to the Lord and say, God, I need you. God, I can't do this. Lord, I need you. 
And what happened was that developed a great habit of prayer. You see, prayer is not some formal thing you go through and you say, oh, I need to pray today. That's what I'm supposed to do. No, prayer is simply a person who's needy saying, God, I need you. And, and those, those bad habits often are the things that will literally push us into the presence of God because we know we can't overcome them in our own self. We need Him. So today and every day, if there's a habit in your life that you know you need to overcome, why don't you make a choice today? And when you're tempted to go the other way with that habit, just choose. Jesus, I choose you. He will give you victory. The more you make that choice, the more you will develop a new habit of dependence upon the Lord and the more freedom you will experience.